So welcome again. Still up to part C we had finished in the last session and now I have a look over part D again 1.1. Question number 1.1 is still on and uh, this question has been framed to open the chapter up a little bit. Correct? So now question you should not uh, what we call let uh, out of your memory. The question was that company had issued 50,000 shares. Two on application, five on allotment, three on call, and now which part D states that director received eighty thousand application and resolved to reject ten thousand in full and to accept thirty thousand in full. This time multiple decisions have been taken. Correct? In the previous cases, there was only one decision. In the first case, we accepted all the what we call applicants, and in the second one, we rejected ten thousand. While in the third one, we allotted. 50,000 share among 80,000 applicants but now here in case D we have rejected 10,000 in full and we have accepted 80,000 in full and further it is given to allot remaining shares in pro rata correct so multiple decisions have been taken in this case three decisions have been taken to reject 10,000 in full to accept 30,000 in full and to allot remaining shares in pro rata Besides question this time also states that Mr. Badbash who held 1000 share failed to pay call money and his shares were forfeited. You know the meaning of forfeited, isn't it? So forfeited means his shares have been cancelled. Sometimes shareholders are given due notice when he fails to pay a particular call and in spite of those notice, if he fails to pay, then company has the right to forfeit, means to cancel his shares. Not only we can cancel his share, but his shares can be later on reissued to somebody else. And, <coughs> and it is written over here, later on these shares were reissued for rupees 8 as fully paid. <coughs> so after the shares have been cancelled, company reissued these shares for rupees 8 as fully paid. That means company gave some concession and normally discount is given when company reissues the share. So this is the major points of this particular question. Now here you will have to pay attention in this particular question. In this particular question, first of all, this is case D. Case D. Now my advice to you is that whenever the question is of oversubscription, you always do some analysis first analysis under the analysis first of all you need to make a column like this shares issued and applications received you can simply write applications Then coolly take into account the number of shares which you are offering. You are offering 50,000 shares. And how many applications you have received? You have received 80,000 applications. Now you, now you consider your first decision. What is the first decision? The first decision states that to reject 10,000 in full. To reject 10,000 in full means out of 80,000 shares, 10,000 applicants were not allotted any shares so that is why here i have put up a dash so it means these shareholders these applicants in fact have been rejected because these have been rejected their amount their application amount which they must have paid along with application should be re refunded so 10000 into 2 rupees 20000 we are going to refund we are going to refund this money correct now what is the situation now we still have 50,000 shares for offer and we still have 70,000 applicants we still have 70,000 applicants the next decision says in fact next decision is given just to confuse you to accept 30,000 in full, to accept 30,000 in full means out of 70,000, 30,000 applications were accepted in full means 30,000 applicants were given 30,000 shares. So this is not going to have any headache, correct? This is not going to give us any problematic situation. Now we move over to the balance. 
20,000 shares are still there to be offered. However, 40,000 applicants are still there. And now, under the third decision, it is given to allot remaining shares among remaining applicants. How many remaining shares are there? 20,000. To allot remaining shares means to allot 20,000 shares among remaining applicants means 40,000. Now you let me know if 20,000 shares are being allotted among 40,000 applicants, what should I call it? It is known as prorata case. You remember? Prorata case. In, similar to the last one. The difference of this in the last question 50,000 total shares were allotted among 80,000 applicants. Correct. Similarly, here 20,000 shares have been allotted among 40,000. So, difference is 20,000. You take the difference, multi multiply it with application rate. In this table, whatever will be there, that will be multiplied with application rate. Total is 4,000. This 40,000 will be adjusted in the next call. It will be refunded and it will be adjusted in the next call. Correct. So, now we can move over to the entries part. Entries. My first entry will be Receipt of application money Receipt of application money Now I am going to receive the application money What will be my application money? Entry Bank account debit to share Application money Share application account Total number of applications which we are receiving 80,000, rate is 2, so 1,60,000. Total 1,60,000, correct? Then, then I am going to write the next entry, adjustment of Adjustment of allotment money. Sorry, adjustment of application money. Extremely sorry. Adjustment of application money towards capital. This time some portion of application will be taken to capital. Some portion will be refunded. And some portion will be taken to the next call. So, adjustment of application money towards capital refund and next call. Correct. So, my entry will be share application account debit. Total amount is 1,60,000. This 1,60,000 must be adjusted to share capital account. I will write here to share capital. In share capital, I will write number of share issued 50,000 into application rate 2. This shows the share of application in the capital which is 1 lakh. Then I will look into the table which I just created. Wherever I will write rejected, that amount will have to be refunded. So I am going to write here to bank. 10,000 applicants have been rejected. So 10,000 into 2. 20,000 will have to be refunded. Then I am going to write here to allotment. To allotment. The difference of 20 and 40 is 20,000. So 20,000 into 2. Because in case of prorata, no one is rejected. Their money will be adjusted in the next call. So 20,000 into 2, 40,000. So you can see that share application has been completely adjusted now. Isn't it or not? Next entry will be allotment money due. Allotment money due. Simple entry share allotment account debit. Share allotment account debit. Total number of share which you are offering 50,000. 
allotment rate is 5, total is 2,50,000. Two share capital that is two lakh fifty thousand. Correct. Now we are going to receive the application money. Receipt of allotment money. Receipt of allotment money when i will receive the allotment money i will have to be careful with respect to the fact that i have already already received some amount of allotment so bank account debit to share allotment account this is the entry i am going to pass total amount i was supposed to receive is 250000 but out of that we have already received 40000 here already so now we are going to receive two lakh ten thousand two lakh ten thousand is it clear to you now share call money due share call money due now you will make the call Share call account debit. 50,000 shares. Call rate is 3. So total 1,50,000. Total 1,50,000. Two share capital. Two share capital account. 1,50,000. Correct. Now, here you will, you will consider this particular fact that one shareholder whose name is Mr. Badmash and he is having 1000 share, he did not pay the call money. So, sometime it happens. So, receipt of call money Now we are going to receive the call money. When I am going to receive the call money, my entry will be bank account debit. Actually, I should have received rupees 1,50,000 because this is the due amount. However, I did not receive on 1,000 shares. One shareholder who was having 1,000 shares did not pay the call money. So how much I would receive? The company will receive 1,47,000. The amount which you haven't received, you can show it this way, calls in area account. Calls in area account. So calls in area on 1,000 shares into 3. Honestly speaking, it is not necessary to reflect calls in area. You can directly write bank account debit to share call account 147 to 147 or you can write this way bank account debit calls in area account debit to share call account 1,50,000 Is it clear to you? So this is your calls in area. At this moment, calls in area means actually it is a sort of debit balance because the shareholder hasn't paid you still, but there, there is a chance that you may receive from him in future. However, you might have given him some notices to pay this, but he didn't pay. So you forfeited his shares. So when the shares are forfeited, what entry you pass? Entry number G, four feature of share. Four feature of shares. Whenever we pass the entry for four feature of shares, we need to understand two, three things. Number one, first of all, when I am going to, I am means from the perspective of the company. When we are going to 
cancel 1000 share the share capital of the company would reduce because we have cancelled 1000 shares so that is why share capital will be debited number of defaulting shareholders defaulting shareholders means the number of shares which are being what we call forfeited into called up amount called up amount what is the called up amount you have already called two on application you have already called five on allotment and you have already called three on call so total called up amount is 10 that means you are going to debit share capital with the number of defaulting shares or number of forfeited shares into called up amount which happens to be 10 in this case so you cancelled your 1000 into 10 total value of share capital by 10,000 because 1000 share have been cancelled so your share capital will reduce by 10,000 2 we write here share forfeited and we will credit it share forfeited account again I am going to write here total number of defaulting share 1000 I will look into the fact that out of out of the amount which we have called how much he has paid the company has called up 10 but this fellow this Badmash has paid rupees 2 on application and 5 on allotment that means total amount paid by him is 7 so share forfeited account simply reflects the amount which you have already received from this shareholders but you are not going to refund this amount to that fellow are you getting my point or not company has issued 1000 share correct to the shareholders and out of this this shareholder has paid 7000 and he did not pay 3000 now whatever you have received you are not going to refund so it is a sort of gain for you the share forfeited account simply reflects gain for you because you have received 7000 and you are not going to refund him and it is considered as a gain for you because you can reissue these shares again are you getting my point or not so whatever you have received that that is something extra which you have received because you can reissue these 1000 shares to somebody else so that is why it is a gain for you, number one. However, later on it is written, these 1000 shares, remember one thing, on these 1000 share, company logically should have received 10,000 only. Correct? However, company has already received 7,000 from first shareholder. First shareholder when I say, it means from Mr. Badmash. But he defaulted and shares were forfeited. Now these shares are again reissued, but when these shares, these 1000 shares are reissued, they are reissued at the rate of rupees 8. At the rate of rupees 8. Generally, company gives concession when company will reissue the shares because company quickly want to restore its share capital. That is why some concession or discount on reissue is given. So, 8000 company will receive from this shareholder. That means on these 1000 share, company logically should have received 10,000, but now company has received total 7,000 into 8,000, 15,000. We have received 15,000 on value of 10,000. So that we need 5,000 worth of gain is for the company. Net gain is 5,000. Anyway, first of all, four feature entry. We debit share capital. I have given you the reason because our share capital gets reduces. Share forfeited account is considered as a gain because we have received some amount on these shares and we are not going to refund the fellow. And then we are going to write here two calls in area. Two calls in area. Remember one thing. Calls in area we are going to credit it. Why we are crediting it? Because here we have debited calls in area. Here we debited it in the hope that this fellow will pay us in future. But because now his shares have been forfeited, he will never ever pay this amount in future. So that is why this amount must be cancelled out. So that is why in order to cancel the same, we will have to credit it. So this is how you have to pass the forfeiture entry. Now we have reissued the share. Entry number H. Reissue of shares.
reissue of ships. Just a moment ago, I told you shares can be reissued. Remember, on these shares, company has already received seven thousand, and even if company will give a seven thousand discount on this share, company will not be under a loss. Correct. However, when we issued the shares, when we reissued the shares, we received only eight. We reissued one thousand shares, and we received in total eight. Debit eight thousand. And here we write share forfeited account. Share forfeited account. Actually, we write share forfeited account. What does it mean? Actually, it means discount on reissue. It means discount on reissue. When we are reissuing the shares, we are giving some concession, some discount. Discount will be rupees two thousand. Quite ob obviously, because one thousand shares of rupees ten each are being offered for eight thousand. So discount is two thousand. Two share capital. One thousand into ten, ten thousand. Now try to understand. Actually, why we debited share forfeited account? Because we are able to give the concession because we have received seven thousand on these shares already. Are you getting my point or not? So, whatever concession which we are giving, it is presumed that we are giving out of this gain. Correct. So that is why my net gain is still seven thousand is credit balance and two thousand is debit balance. The difference of these two, five thousand. And I also told you five thousand earlier how we are ultimately having a gain off because we can look at the gain from two sides. I have one thousand shares of rupees ten each, ten thousand. On these shares, I received seven thousand from the first shareholder, and when I reissued these shares again, I received eight thousand from the second shareholder. Correct? That means total I have received fifteen thousand. Whereas I should have had received ten thousand, so quite obviously the gain is five thousand. This is one way of looking at it. Second, second way is that on one thousand shares, because your first shareholder has already paid you seven thousand, correct, and you did not refund this amount, so it is a gain to you. And in the second, when these shares were reissued, when these shares were reissued, you gave a discount of two thousand. That means at the time of reissue you incurred, you can say a loss of rupees two thousand for the sake of saying. However, since you have received seven thousand extra already from the first shareholder, so still net gain is five thousand. So that is why share forfeited account here is debited because it is presumed that this loss, this discount is being offered out of this gain. Correct. So finally. Whatever balance, or finally, whatever net gain is there in the whole process of forfeiture and reissue, that will be transferred to capital reserve because it is a capital nature reserve. Capital nature reserve means something which arises due to what we call not due to what we call activities other than the operational one. So it is not an operating activity. We did not receive here. We are not having any gain due to sale or purchase or what we call disposal of any operational transaction. Correct. So now I am going to write the next and the final entry, and this entry will be transfer of share forfeited balance. Transfer of share forfeited balance. Transfer of share forfeited balance. To capital reserve, so it is considered as capital reserve, and your entry will be share forfeited account debit. So still there is a balance of five thousand in share forfeited, seven thousand minus two thousand. That balance is now being transferred. Share forfeited balance, share forfeited account debit, five thousand. That will be transferred to capital reserve. To capital reserve. So you can see your part. This is nothing but a full-fledged question. 
you must have noticed that with the help of only case D, with the help of only 1.1, we have opened down the entire chapter. So that is why I told you in the initial stages that you need to show a little bit of patience. So now we can move over to question number. This was 1.1. Now I will take the next sheet. Case D 1.2 now. Just have a look over 1.2. Here it is 1.2. The name itself is very threatening one. Tornado Limited, isn't it? Tornado Limited issued 10,000 shares of 10 each at 20% premium. You know better than I that shares can be issued at a value higher than the face value and that is known as premium. So whenever shares are issued, face value is 10. And we are issuing the shares at 20% premium. So 20% of 10 is 2. That means we are issuing the shares at the rate of rupees 10. So whenever shares are issued, face value is 10. At a price, this is issue price. At a price which is more than the face value, then we call it premium. Issue of shares at a premium. No doubt security premium is a gain for the company. It is a gain for the company. Security premium is considered as a capital nature reason. It is considered as a capital nature reason. Correct? It is considered as capital nature reason. Because it does not arise due to production or sale. So any such gain which arises due to transaction which influences balance sheet is known as capital nature reserve. As you also know that security premium is capital nature. So it can be used for the purpose of bonus issue, for writing of any preliminary expenses. You need to require to write, I'm just telling you. Underwriting commission, correct? But security premium cannot be used what we call for the purpose of issue of dividend because it is capital nature gain. So security premium. So this time it is a case of issue of shares at a premium. Now question says, Tornado Limited issued 10,000 shares of rupees 10 each. Where is the rough sheet? I have to keep it with me. And now the question says that this is the face value, correct? 10 and this is the issue price 12. Rupees 2 is on application. Remember one thing, whatever rates you are given, that rate are always with respect to issue price. When I say 2 is on application and 7 is on allotment and question has very clearly mentioned, 7 is on allotment including premium. That means, this is the issue rate of allotment. So natural, natural rate for simplicity, allow me to say so. Natural rate means I can say that natural face value of allotment is 5 plus 2 because premium is to be paid along with allotment. Premium can be paid along with application, can be called along with allotment or even call. But generally it is always called along with allotment money. So shareholders are asked to pay the premium money along with the allotment. So that is why allotment rate is 7. And question further states that rupees 3 on, it is written in the next sheet now, rupees 3 on first and final call. So rupees 3 is on first and final call. So that is why here it is 12 and here it is 10. So we can say this is the face value of the different calls and this is the issue issue price of the different calls. We can say it this way round also. Now the next point is, don't forget that here we are offering 10,000 shares and now the question states that total application received were 15,000. Similar to the last one, even in this question, we have received total application equal to 15,000. Now question again says, total application received 15,000 and director decided to allot shares to 13,000 applicants while rest were rejected. See the lining of the question. Question says that out of these 10,000 shares, 10,000 shares were allotted among 13,000 applicants. That means here pro rata allotment is there. Here pro rata allotment is there. And after allotting these shares, the balancing situation is that we have no shares to offer. However, still there are 2,000 applicants. 
and when we do not have any shares to offer but still there are some applicants then only alternative available with us now is to reject them so we must have rejected these 2000 so this is the situation in this question correct further the question states that mr nice who held 1000 share failed to pay anything apart from application anything apart from application that means mr nice Mr. Nice, name is Nice, no doubt about that, but his intentions were not very nice because he paid only application money. He paid the application money, but he did not pay the allotment and he did not pay the call money. And his shares were forfeited. His shares were forfeited and later on reissued to Mr. Wise at the rate of 9 per share as fully paid. So this is the question, correct? So this is the rough sheet where i just jotted down the important points so 1.2 in 1.2 question number 1.2 let me write here first of all we will do the analysis as we normally do first step analysis in the analysis in one column as i told you you write shares issued how many shares you are issuing and application we are offering 10000 shares and applications being received by us is 15000 the first decision company took is all the 10,000 shares were allotted among 13,000 applicants. Lesser number of shares are being allotted among higher number of applicants. It means it is a case of pro rata allotment. Whenever there will be pro rata allotment, we will take the difference 3,000. We will multiply it with the application rate, which happens to be 2 in this case. So, rupees 6,000 because it is related to pro rata allotment, this money will be adjusted in the next call. Now, what is the situation is still? The balancing situation is that we don't have any shares to offer now. However, in the waiting, there are 2,000 applicants. In the waiting, there are 2,000 applicants. And the next decision is that we rejected the remaining applications. Rejected means we did not allot a single share to these fellows. These shares, these applicants were simply told big no. So that is why it will become a case of rejection. Tooth and their money, I need not require to tell you, will have to be refunded. So four rupees four thousand will be refunded, six thousand will be adjusted towards the next one. Besides, in this question, there is one Mr. Nice. Mr. Nice is having one thousand shares. He is having 1,000 share. On 1,000 share, Mr. Nice has paid the application money, but he did not pay the allotment money. But he did not pay the allotment money and he did not bother to pay the call money also. Allotment rate is 2. Sorry, application rate is 2. 7 is this. And what was the rate? 3. 3 is the call rate. These rates are related to issue price of 12. Question is at a premium. Besides, we will see this question belongs to the category of real prorata. One is prorata and another one is real prorata. Why this question belongs to category of real prorata? Actually, there is no such legal word. We are using the real, real prorata only for simplicity's case. This is a case of real prorata. This is... A case of real prorata problem. Real prorata problem means I have already told you it is not a legal word. We are using it for our simplicity. If there is a shareholder, if the question is of oversubscription, in case a case to be categorized as real prorata need to satisfy these two points question must be of oversubscription 
So this question is oversubscription case, no doubt about that. Correct? There must be oversubscription and one or more shareholder must have defaulted on allotment. Default on allotment. For example, when we did case number D of 1.1, even over there, case of prorata was there, but there was no default on, there was no default on allotment money. That is why the question was out of bound of real prorata. But here in this case, I am saying this question belongs to the category of real prorata. It means here over subscription is there and default on allotment is also there. And whenever there will be default on allotment, there will be some serious issues which we may have to address. Correct? However, let's first start the question as usual as we normally do. Now we will take up entries. Entry number one. Application money. Bank account debit. Two, share application account. Total number of applications you will have to look at. That is 15,000. Application rate is two. So 30,000 rupees we shall receive. How much? 30,000. Is it clear to you? B. Adjustment of application money. Now we will adjust the application money. So my entry will be share application account debit. Share application account debit. Total application account is 30,000. Correct? Out of this, we will transfer some portion to capital. Now you let me know how much I should transfer to capital. What I have been telling you, whenever you are going to transfer to capital, always look at the number of shares which you are offering to the public. You are offering to the public how many shares in this case? 10,000 shares, isn't it? So you shall write in the bracket 10,000. Application rate is 2. So out of 30,000, 20,000, you have transferred to capital. We may call it this way, that share of application money in the share capital is 20,000. Now, I will write here to bank. Bank means some portion of application money is being refunded. If you will look into the table which I just prepared, 2,000 shares have been rejected. So 4,000 will be refunded, correct? 4,000 will be refunded. So, 2000 into 2, 4000 rupees we have refunded. And then I am going to write here, 2 share allotment, that is the next one. Some portion of application money is being adjusted towards the next call, which happens to be allotment. Correct? On 3000 shares of rupees 2 each. Because 10,000 shares were allotted among 13,000. So pro rata allotment was there. So 6,000 will be adjusted in the allotment. When we say adjusted in the allotment, we are presuming that this 6,000 on allotment has already been received. Correct? So this is how the entry for adjustment will run like. Now, the entry number 3. Share allotment account due. Share allotment money due. Your entry will be share allotment account debit. Now here you will have to exercise the caution. Share allotment account debit. When you will debit the share allotment account, first of all look into how many shares you are offering to the public. 10,000 shares. Allotment rate is 7. So write here 70,000. Then you write here 2 share capital. Whenever we will transfer to capital, 
we will always look over the fact at how many shares we are offering to the public 10,000 shares here I am not going to multiply it with 7 here I am going to multiply it with the natural face rate that was the point when I started off the question where is that sheet now where is that rough sheet just let me check if it is lying here I will be able to let you know Okay, I'm not able to trace it down. Right? I told you in the beginning that face value is 10. Correct? And issue price is 12. I told you this way. I also told you that in the information generally when it is written that application rate is 2, that means these rates are generally with respect to issue price. So out of 12, 2 is application, 7 is allotment and call money was 3. This 2, this 7 or this 3 is related to the issue price. Now what is the, what we call value of application as far as natural face rate is concerned? Of course it is 2. But as far as allotment is concerned, we may say that natural face rate, natural face rate because face value is 10. So natural face rate is 5 plus 2 then it becomes 7 and similarly natural face value of call is 3 so you need to pay attention towards such wordings which I am going to use during the discussion so natural face rate of allotment is 5 you got my point or not so whenever we are going to transfer to capital we are going to look into the fact that how many shares we are offering to the public and what is the natural face value of the call so share of allotment in the share capital actually is 50,000 because rupees 2 is on premium, it means share of premium in the allotment is this much. Share premium. So out of 70,000, which we are supposed to receive on allotment, 50,000 will be transferred to capital and 20,000 will be transferred to security premium account. Security premium account. Is it clear to you or not? Correct. This is how we are going to pass the entry for security premium account. Now we will receive the allotment money. Receipt of allotment money. Now when we are going to receive the allotment money, we have to exercise some caution as I told you. And especially in this question. Especially in this question. Pay attention. I am going to write bank account debit. Calls in area account debit. To share allotment account. You can directly write bank account debit to share allotment account if you feel so. It is not necessary to write calls in area. How much amount should I write? That is the point is. See here. Here you will have to exercise some caution. Actually I am supposed to receive on allotment 10,000 shares at the rate of 7. Total I am supposed to receive 70,000. But out of 70,000, as we have seen, that we have already received 6,000 rupees. Correct? When we wrote in the second entry to allotment, it means we have already received 6,000. That means 64,000 we must now receive. If we have received 6,000, now 64,000 we should receive. Okay. However, one shareholder, Mr. Nice, who held 1,000 shares, Remember Mr. Nice, he held 1,000 shares, but he did not pay the allotment money. Because allotment rate, allotment rate is 7. Allotment rate is 7. So logically, I should subtract here 7,000. And if I will subtract 7,000, I will come to know how much actually I received. It seems like this, isn't it or not? 70,000 we should have received, 6,000 we have already received, so 64,000 we should have received. And out of 64,000, one shareholder who held 1,000 shares actually did not pay the allotment money. So quite obviously, it means now 
I should subtract 7,000 out of 64. So, I may say that we received 57,000. But, problem is this. It looks like Mr. Nice did not pay 7,000. It looks like that. It, is, it looks like that because he held 1,000 shares and 7 is the allotment rate which he failed to pay. So, quite obviously, it seems he hasn't paid us 7,000 on allotment. But this is not the case. How much he did not pay, we will have to calculate. And why we will have to calculate? Because in this question, there is real prorata. There is real prorata means there is oversubscription and default is also there on allotment. So we will have to make some calculations. What are those calculations which we shall have to make in this question? That is the point which we need to understand. See here. Bank account debit calls in area account debit to share allotment account. This is the entry which I need to write. No doubt about that. But I will have to do some calculations. First of all, I need to know how much NICE did not pay. So how will I calculate that? I will have to do some workings. In the workings, I will have to compute first of all pro rate. What is pro rate? Pro rate should be computed very carefully. Don't think that you have issued 10,000 share and received 15,000 applications so your pro rate rate is 10 is to 50. Pro rate rate is actually 10,000 shares you allotted among 13,000 applicants. So your pro rate rate will be 10 is to 30. This is important for you to compute. Pro rate rate is 10 is to 30. It means if a person who applied for 13, 13 share got only 10 share. Or in other words, we may say if a person has been allotted 10 shares, he must have applied for 13 shares. You can also say that 10,000, what does it reflect? It reflects allotted shares. It reflects allotted shares and it reflects applied. So, 10,000 shares were allotted to those who applied for 13,000. So, our pro rate rate is 10 is to 30. Now, under the second step, you need to find out for how many applications NICE must have applied for because it is already given to us that he has been allotted 1,000 shares. So, Mr. NICE, Mr. NICE must have Mr. Nice must have applied for. For how many shares he must have applied for? For how many shares he must have applied for? So we can find out. If you are allotted 10 shares, you have applied for 13, it means. And if you have applied for 1000 shares, and sorry, if you have been allotted 1000 share for how many share you must have applied for so 1000 into 13 divided by 10 so i will get 1300 shares through this calculation i have come to know that mr nice must have applied for 1300 share and he must have got 1000 share now you will compute share application money share application monies paid on 1300 shares share application money paid on 1300 shares because he applied for 1,300 shares, he must have paid 1,300 shares at the rate of 2. So, he must have paid 2,600. Quite obviously, if I am applying for 1,300 shares and application rate is 2, I will pay 2,600 as the application money. 
But I did not get what we call 1,300 share from the company. I got only 1,000 shares. So it means share application money required. Share application money required on 1,000 share because you were allotted 1,000 share. So on 1,000 shares, at the rate of 2, you are supposed to pay or you were supposed to pay 2,000 rupees only. But you pay 2,600. So that means your 600 rupees is already with the company. And the company, remember one thing, because you have been allotted share, company definitely must not have refunded this amount to you because you are supposed to pay the next call. So company will adjust it in the next call. Now, through these calculations, we came to know that you have paid 600 rupees extra to this particular company, correct? Now, when, you, when your turn for allotment will come, company will tell you, allotment money due, allotment money due, because you held 1000 shares, you have been allotted 1000 shares and call rate is 7. Here you will have to write full rate 7. That means 7000 rupees was due from you. No doubt about that. But less excess application money. Since you have paid 600 rupees extra, less excess application money. which is 600, it means 6400 was due from you to the company on allotment and not 7000. So when I would say that Mr. Nice did not pay allotment money means he did not pay 6400 because 6400 is the amount which was due from him. From him. Is it clear to you or not? So now I am going to write here say here uh, allow me actually just four five uh, four five minutes i will take a break and i will continue i'm not stopping the class because my tea has just come and uh, let me take a break and then i will continue it further correct because i'm also tired sometime it happens now today this mouse is creating problem you can see
So welcome again. I'm really sorry to make you wait for a while. So we were talking about the prorata calculation. So I told you that whenever there will be oversubscription and default on allotment, first of all, we need to compute the prorata rate carefully. And then we will have to find out how many shares the defaulted shareholders must have applied for, which in, which in this case, he applied for 1,300 share. So he has paid application money of 2,600. Whereas he was supposed to pay on 1,000 share at the rate of 2, 2,000. So 600 is his extra money. And <coughs> then I told you allotment money due logically because he is a shareholder having 1,000 shares and he is having 7 sh and 7 is the rate of the allotment. So he was supposed to pay 7,000. But 600 is the application money which he has already paid at the time of application. So he is supposed to pay 6400 on allotment which he did not pay so this is the amount of allotment we can say due but not received due but not received due but not received so once we have computed it now we can find out how much we must have received on what we call allotment see here we were supposed to receive 70,000 correct on allotment 6000 we have received already along with application and now mr nice did not pay 6400 to us he did not pay 6400 to us correct so all in all now we are going to receive how much where is the calculator i will need calculator now that is equal to 70,000 minus 6,000 minus 6,400. That is 57,600. So 57,600 is the net amount which we are supposed to, which we must have received on allotment. 57,600. Correct. And calls in area because Mr. Nice did not pay allotment money and he did not pay 6400 so i will write here 6400 if you want to show calls in area otherwise you can directly write bank account debit to share allotment account 57600 and to share allotment that will be 57600 it is 600 please plus 6400 64000 As I told you, out of 76,000 we had received already earlier, so 64,000 we can say was the debt amount which we were supposed to receive, but out of that 6,400 we did not receive and 57,600 we received. Correct? So, whenever question is of oversubscription category and along with that there is default on allotment, in that case these calculations will have to be done. Correct? Now we move over to the next part of the question, case entry number E, call money, call money due. Now I will write here call money, share call account debit, total number of shares being offered 10,000, call rate is 3, Total due is 30,000 to share capital account. To share capital account, correct? 30,000. Now, receipt of call money. Receipt of call money. Receipt of call money. When you are going to receive the call money, your entry will be like this. Bank account debit. Again, calls in area account. CIA, calls in area account. To share call account. You are supposed to receive 30,000 on call. Out of that, Mr. Nice Again, he did not pay the allotment. He did not pay the call money also. 
it did not pay the call money <laughs> and he has 1000 share so 3000 is the amount which we did not receive it means we have received 57000 correct this is how we will have to write the call money we can directly write the entry bank account debit to share call account 57000 57000 it is not necessary at all to write calls in here now we forfeited his share for feature of share for feature of shares Here I am going to write, I just told you whenever there will be four feature, you will have to debit the share capital account, number one. Number two, you will consider the defaulting shareholder. Mr. Nice is having 1000 share, he is the defaulting shareholder. Now coolly compute the natural, see what I am writing, whenever we shall talk about capital, we will talk about natural face rate, correct? I told you and so many times during the discussion of this particular chapter I have told you your natural face rates are like this in this question and your issue rates are 2, 7 and 3 correct you have already called up rupees 2 on application 5 on allotment because we have to consider natural face rate that means we have called up entire 10 rupees so I am going to multiply it with 10. Whenever we are going to talk about capital, we shall always talk about natural face rate. So defaulting shareholder into called up amount. So I am going to debit my share capital by this amount, 10,000. Now, in case of forfeiture, there is some problem with respect to security premium. In forfeiture entry, security premium account can be debited and cannot be debited. Pay attention. When it will be debited? Security premium account will be debited only if security premium account hasn't been received, has not been received. Then we are going to debit it. In this question, security premium is of allotment and we did not receive allotment money. Because we did not receive security premium, because a lot security premium was supposed to be paid along with pre allotment. So we did not receive the premium money. So that is why I am going to debit it. 1000 into 2, that is 2000. Security premium will be debited only. I am writing here. Security premium shall be debited shall be debited if not received so if premium hasn't been received then you are going to debit it the logic behind is that why we are going to debit because in entry number three we have credited security premium if we have credited it 10,000 into 2 and we are not going to receive on 1,000 share because his shares have been forfeited now. Mr. Nye's share have been forfeited. So quite obviously we are not going to receive this much of amounts. So if I am not going to debit security premium, then it will show unnecessarily higher balance. So in order to cancel it out a wee bit, so we have to debit it. Then here we have to write two share forfeited. In the share forfeited account, generally we write the amount which we have received. And my advice to you, always consider it as balancing figure. It shows the amount which you have al already received. Instead of finding out how much you have received, because if you will think this way, that on 1000 shares you have received 2 on application, so amount should be 2000 so chances are there that you might commit mistake correct actually we will see that we have received 2600 because we received rupees 2000 we received application money of 2000 but we also received 600 extra because actually the shareholder had applied for 1300 share he got 1000 shares only and he had paid us actually 2600 so 
such type of calculation mistake could creep in if we are going to calculate it so better always take it as balancing figure especially if you are passing for feature entry and question is of premium so in that case make it a habit of taking it as a balancing figure instead first of all write what you haven't received so for that we write calls in area now calls in area now look into your entries you have written here calls in area and this amount will not be received so calls in area is with respect to allotment which you are not going to receive 6400 you can write combinedly also but now i have written and calls in area also with respect to call money calls in area 3000 so total you did not receive 9000 400 are you getting my point or not now if we will subtract 9400 correct see here this is the total of debit side 12000 so from 12000 if i am going to subtract 9400 i will get 2600 so this is the credit balance 2600 that means this much of amount we have already received and we did not receive allotment we did not receive call so we can straight we write two calls in area if we have written here in the entry calls in area if in the entries we haven't written calls in area then we can directly write two share allotment or two share call account correct so this is how the four feature entry is passed first of all consider the defaulted share correct always take the natural face rate how much you have called up security premium account will be debited only if it hasn't been paid by the shareholder Secure it. Generally, share forfeited balance shows the amount which we have received, but better to consider it as a balancing figure 2600. And then calls not received will be represented by calls in area. You did not receive allotment money 6400 from this defaulting shareholder. And from this defaulting shareholder, you did not receive 3000. Now we will make reissue of entry. The reissue entry, sorry. Reissue of share. reissue of shares when i will pass the entry for reissue of share my entry will be bank account debit first of all i will look into the question i am reissuing the shares question has stated that at the rate of nine share as fully paid first of all you must understand this at the rate of 9, that means a share of the face value of 10 is being offered at 9. So that means 1 rupee is the discount. So 1000 into 9 you will receive debit. Then we will write here share forfeited account because the concession or the discount which we give is out of this share forfeited balance we have given a discount of rupee 1 so 1000 and then we are going to write to share capital share capital 1000 into 10 that is 10000 correct now, if I ask you what is my net balance which I need to transfer to capital reserve, entry number I, balance in share forfeited account, balance in share forfeited account transfer to capital reserve. So, whatever balance is there, in your share forfeited now you are going to transfer it to capital reserve your entry will be share forfeited account debit share forfeited account debit credit balance is 2600 credit balance is 2600 this is your credit balance out of this you have given a discount of 1000 discount will always be given out of this correct 
So now share forfeited got debited by 1000. So the net balance is 1600. So net gain is 1600, we may say, to capital reserve. Correct? So this is how we have to do this question and in the upcoming session we will stress the discussion more.